so I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Riggs, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking we should cut the blue wire. Hey, wait! What? That's not what I'm thinking. What? Do you think maybe the red? No, no. Hey, hey, wait, wait, Riggs, wait! What? How can you be so sure? Oh, it's just a hunch. You're playing a hunch. Cutting the red wire, okay? Help! Who? What? What? A minute ago, you said blue. Did I say blue? Riggs, you said blue. No, I meant red. You sure? I'm sure, okay? Rog. Yeah. Grab the cat. Grab the cat. Get back! Take that! Let's do it on three, Vance. Here we go. One. You ready? Yeah. I I go on three or. Yeah, we'll we'll go on three this time. So one, two. Where you at, Vance? Oh, I'm saying three. Yeah, you're going on three. I'm going on three. Right. I'm going on right. three, or you're saying three, and then I go. Yeah, exactly. So three. Welcome back to Box Office Maniacs, and we're doing our franchise of all four Lethal Weapon films from the Blu-ray that contains all four Lethal Weapon films. And we're up to... Lethal Weapon 3. This is a franchise that just had numbers. You know, a lot of the times they just have names for the franchise, like Die Hard or whatever. This is just one, two, three, and four. Simple. Well, what else do you need? I mean... I, and eventually people just call it, hey, you know, did you ever see Die Hard 3? You know, they don't usually say, did you see Die Hard with a Vengeance? Now, I hadn't seen this film for who knows how long. It's been a, probably since it's been in the movie theaters. So watching this was a brand new movie to me. I remembered nothing from this film, Vince. I knew he met the woman in here, and that was it. That's the only memory I had of this film. I didn't know who the bad guy was. I didn't know what the story, the plot was. I didn't know how it started. But when it did start, then I remembered that somewhat because when they were filming that, they made a big deal out of it about them blowing up the big building at the beginning of it. It was a really big thing here in Florida because that happened in Orlando. And they made a big deal about it, about Richard Donner having his whole crew there and they were filming a movie and then they finally let it out that it was a Lethal Weapon film. And it seems like they try to go big for every Lethal Weapon film. Like every, sort of like an Indiana Jones film, every one of them has to have the big thing at the beginning of it now. And this was pretty big. I mean, and, but the problem with it was, it was kind of obvious that it was probably, well not probably, but it was a building that they were going to demolish anyway and they found out about it, and they're like, oh, hey, since you're going to demolish this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not demolish the movie. They're going to demolish this building. They didn't demolish the movie, actually. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, it was one of those things, the obvious things, that, yeah, they're going to blow this building up, and then Richard Donner's like, wait a minute. This would be great opening for Lethal Weapon. So it's kind of obvious. I mean, they're not just going to blow an entire building up for a movie. Yeah, I was going to say, some people might agree with you that they demolished the movie with, with this one, but there's some people out there that would. Well, let's get into that. Um, but the beginning of it, I loved. Oh, my God, it was so funny. The thing with the cat and the blowing up the building, it was great. I mean, that was classic Lethal Weapon. Hilarious. Really, really well done. Yeah, I love the. I, I actually really enjoyed this film, and I think I enjoyed it a lot more than a lot of other people did, because I do remember when this came out, and people were like, it, 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 it wasn't that they hated it, but they didn't like it as much as the other two, and I don't know why. I, I really don't understand why, because I love it as much as the other two. I, I, I think it had the right amount of humor, it had the right amount of action. I think the story, yeah, maybe the story was a little weaker, but it wasn't a bad story, and I enjoyed it. 
I, I really actually like this one a lot. I think maybe the problem with this was that it started in the mid 80s and now it's the 90s and they're still making Lethal Weapon films and it's like, oh, they're still making these movies after all this time? And I think it came out pretty, it didn't come out as fast as 2 did, didn't it? I think it came out pretty, like a bunch of years later. No. <laughs> no, no, that's, no. <laughs> oh, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong then. I was looking on the back of the Blu-ray, I was trying to find out when, when this movie came out. No. <laughs> no. No, it didn't. But actually, like I said, I had no memory. And watching this one after another after another, like we did, we watched one one night, then the next night, and the next, and we watched them all in a, in a series like that. It was fun to do that. And actually, I really liked this movie. For a third film, I thought it was really good. And I remember seeing it back in whatever year it was and wasn't that crazy about it. But all these years later, after I went back and rewatched it, I'm like, oh, hey, that's actually wasn't too bad. Yeah, I think that, that hap has happened to a lot of people. I think they go back and they watch this movie and they go, well, the third one was all right. It was not so bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Or I think there are still a few people out there that really... I, I think what it was, too, was this one had more humor to it than the other ones. But, for myself, I think it had a, a great balance of it, of humor and action and all of that. But, I don't know, to some people I think it just had too much. Maybe it just went over the top for people. I don't know. I like the fact that Riggs got a girlfriend in this. And the one thing about that sequence is pretty much everybody has stolen that sequence from every movie since is when they're showing off all their scars and everything. Oh, I got this from this. Every movie ever since then, not everyone, but a lot of them have that sequence in the movie now. Oh, look, I got this scar. No, I got that scar. And it's from this movie is where they steal it from. Actually, I think it's more from Jaws. <laughs> okay, well, no! Let's just shoot him. Oh, 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 get out of the way, Roger! I'm gonna drill him! Would you make it look like suicide? Get out of the way! Would you make it look like suicide? I don't care, I'm still gonna drill him! Get out of the way! Get out of here before my partner kills you! They, it just, with with Lethal Weapon 3, they did it in a in a different way, and it was a little more playful because he was trying to, he was flirting with with uh, Rene Russo's character. That's what I'm saying, though, is, okay, maybe they got it from Jaws. Maybe I'm wrong, Vince, but after this movie, it was like in every other cop film or every other action film, people are showing off and comparing their scars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right on that one. I'm right on that one. Okay. <laughs> I'm not I'm not wrong all the time, Vince. I don't know where we're going with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so the story here was about a bad cop and it was a good story actually. Like I said, I thought it was really good. I didn't uh, mind the story at all. I thought uh, it wasn't bad. That I enjoyed where it went and thought that the evil cop was pretty evil and I liked the fact that you know that it was an evil cop this time around and not some drug dealer or whatever but uh, yeah I really enjoyed it I thought it was really good and, and it surprised me I didn't think because I kind of went into it thinking Ugh, you know third one but after I watched it I was like wow that's pretty decent it's not bad it's not a horrible story I and like I said the movie is fun that's that's what's really great about this movie is it's fun and it's funny and it's entertaining and I think that has a lot to do with uh, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover and because by this time I mean those two guys are like those are the two those are the lethal weapon guys you know you can't really do a series without these two guys doing that thing and then when you see other buddy cop films you know a lot of times they get compared to that you know to to 
Mel Gibson and Danny Glover's chemistry in this. And for these films, it just works, like, 100%. Overall, I would give Lethal Weapon 3 a... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. What is it, Vince? What's going on? What's happening? Before we go any farther with this, we've got to put in here whether or not we're going to archive this or whether we're going to bury this film. And this is a brand new rating system that we are using for the franchise films and for the forgotten films because we thought it would be more fun to archive a film or bury the film. If you guys want to join in on this, it would be a lot of fun to, you know, all you have to do is either write archived it or you would buried it in, in your comments. So I think it would be a really fun way to interact with you guys as well. And so and down there in the comments, you can you can put your own little rating down there of what you would do. But for Lethal Weapon 3, what would you say you would do for Lethal Weapon 3, Dave? Well, I did not like it as much as the first and second film. It's still a lot of fun with a great story, you know, great acting, great action, and it still holds up. All this stuff still holds up today, and it's completely worth watching. So, because of that, it's going into the archive. And I would second that, because I also didn't think it was quite as good as the other two, but it was still so much fun. It was a lot of fun to watch. It's one of those, it's just a fun movie. It's all together. It's just fun. Fun. And that's what you want at the films, is fun. And for me, I would say archive it. Three out of three now, Vince. Now, that's unusual for any franchise, I think, to have all of them archived so far. So if you haven't watched the other two reviews, I just spoiled them for you. But who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so, with that said, let's get back to what we were talking about before. Because it's probably really important. And there's extras on here, on this four-disc collection. And I didn't watch any of them. So... I'm going to comment on the extras, because I did watch them. No? <laughs> yes, I did. I sat through all these extras. I think David would agree with me No. on this, is at least the picture and the sound were decent on this. I think, I think it was pretty clear for you as well as it was for me. Yeah, I didn't have any problem with it. They look good to me. No? I think that Lethal Weapon 2 and Lethal Weapon 3 came from one certain set. And that's why it's so different. And when you watch Lethal Weapon 2 and 3, you can tell there's a big difference because, for one thing, the commentary, which I'm about to talk about, just starts up in Lethal Weapon 2 and 3. You don't even, you wouldn't even know who's talking because they don't even introduce themselves. So I'm thinking that whatever set that Lethal Weapon 2 and 3 came from probably had a Lethal Weapon 1 and where they actually started their commentary and probably introduced themselves then. The one thing I do know is the director, Richard Donner, is the, one of the guys on the commentary. The other guy I have no idea because they never say their names. And if you weren't, if it wasn't for the fact that you can read it on the back of the Blu-ray here, it says plus commentary by Richard Donner, you wouldn't even know it's Richard Donner. Hello? Now, speaking of the commentary, it sucks. <laughs> I can't believe you did that! I got a spare to chunk, I'll fix you! And the reason it sucks is because, not because Richard Donard's commentary is, is bad, it's that he sits there watching the film, and the guy that's watching it with him, they're both commenting on the film. However, there's big lags in here where they don't say anything. And then it, it's, it's one of those things where he's sitting there watching the movie and he's going, okay, Mel, in this part, he decided he's going to grab the cat. Oh, that was great. That was great. Did you see that? Did you see how that happened? That's his commentary in this. You literally hear him stop, and then he 
totally switches gears and talks about something else or he'll totally you know oh that was great did she see that that was funny you know <laughs> and it, it's like all the way through the film he does this through lethal weapon 2 and 3 and it's, it's just terrible commentary for that next up is the deleted scenes now the one thing about these deleted scenes they're not bad I kinda wish they would have left some of them in there but all the deleted scenes that are in here are on the director's cut so if you've never seen the director's cut of lethal weapon 3 you're not missing anything and last but not least we have a music video by Eric Clapton and Sting it's probably me and it's actually a great song I really like the song it's the one they play at the very beginning of the film but one thing about, with the commentary as well one last thing and David kind of talked about this was whenever there was something when they were filming this movie they would call him up and say hey we're gonna do this we're gonna blow up a building or hey we're gonna we're gonna drop something off a, a bridge or hey we're gonna we've got this set up over here do you think you could use it in your movie and they actually did that all the way through this movie. There's a, there's a part where they were building the, the, the highway. So they they said, well, we got construction out here on this highway. Oh, okay, we'll do a car scene, and it you know he ends up going off the top off the highway on his motorcycle. Yeah, again, because that looked too real. I mean, again, that's what I was thinking when I was watching that construction scene, too. I was like, oh, well, it, it's an actual construction scene. They're not going to build a bridge like that, you know, for a lethal weapon, because that would be way too expensive. Because of that, all those stunts happen in camera. It, it happens right there on camera. So there's no, there's no CGI to it. There's no, you know, everything is done with stunt people and and stunt coordinators and it's made the way a movie should be made <laughs> so there you go there is lethal weapon 3 and we are continuing our lethal weapon series with lethal weapon 4 <laughs> no so hopefully you will come back because the next one might surprise you it it uh it was Probably the least watched one out of all of them, I would say. I don't know. I don't know until we get to Lethal Weapon 4, which you're going to subscribe to, and you're going to come back and watch. <laughs> no! You're going to hit the little bell up there so you know when we post it. You subscribe to us, and you can come back and see Lethal Weapon 4. Or you can just sit there on your phone and watch it anyway. No! Activate. Activate.